Okay, we're back here live in uh, New York City for Strata Hadoop World. This is SiliconAngle.com, Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We're out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. This is where all the action's happening for big data. This is Big Data Week in New York City. Um, the Cube was just in Las Vegas last week for information on demand, and we're here now with all the actually emerging startups uh, changing the game in big data. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Go there for all the open source research where practitioners and peers get together. Uh, we're here with John Schroeder, who's the CEO and co-founder of MapR. John, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for uh, coming by. You guys, um, you guys joined in the Hadoop craze when it was really kind of exploding. Um, you've had a different approach. Um, now, Hadoop has completely gone mainstream, we heard from many of our guests. Um, but it's not just Hadoop that's big data anymore. A lot of other things are happening. So um, share with ha what you guys are doing with Hadoop, uh, with your customer base, your technology. Um, we last spoke at Google I.O. where you had this most incredible benchmark um, <coughs> with Google uh, Compute Engine. Similarly, things going on here. So give us the update on MapR and, 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 and unpack your value proposition relative to what's going on in the Hadoop. Yeah, and, and and actually, what we're doing is uh, you know pretty mainstream for an open source related company. Is we've got a you know free free distribution for Hadoop. We've got a paid for enterprise distribution that we provide 24 by 7 support on. Um, it does have enterprise enhancements, so we've done some things to really improve the Hadoop experience. Really focusing on making it easier to build, deploy, and run Hadoop applications in production. Uh, really improving the reliability with things like backup and recovery and uh, high availability, disaster recovery, mirroring, things like that. And then in general, we can speed up the Hadoop environment quite a bit. So those are really kind of the three pillars for what we do. And we made some you know, new announcements this week as well. So we've got some more product coming out. So are you by nature an impatient guy? So yes, is this I what am. happened? So you were watching the Hadoop move and said, ah, it's not going fast enough, I'm going <laughs> to accelerate it. Well, Take us back to the sort well of early days. We were days. actually, well, my first company was in the biz business intelligence space. So uh, uh, analytics has been something I've worked on since uh, oh, early to mid 90s. So it's a, it's a sweet spot for me. Um, certainly, I, I could see that big data was a high priority issue for. Uh, really any large companies or even federal agencies from you know, starting with Web 2.0 but rolling across the more mainstream market segments. And, uh, and then you could really see that Hadoop was really the platform that was going to be able to support the broadest range of use cases. So if you, look at, if you go back to 2008, there were so many different competing NoSQL databases and NoSQL technologies, but you could see Hadoop growing from its roots where it was going to start from you know, batch predictive analytics, but it could grow to support a much broader set of use cases, and now we're seeing it grow to do more interactive query processing and even some uh, real-time capabilities. So, uh, so that's really what I saw out there and uh, partnered with a, a Google technologist that had a vision for how to put together an architecture that would really service the market. And we were off to the races in 2009 and uh, have a great customer base we've built up now. You guys seem to take the best of the Hadoop concept and really bolt on kind of you know commercial industrial grade features uh, to kind of make it stable and run, uh, run well in kind of normal uh, business environments, enterprise environments, whether it's BI or whatnot. Um, but performance is obviously number one thing people want to get at when they want to get these workloads. And you know, you've got Moore's Law always happening, and that's one of the main problems with the infrastructure today is one, we talk about the data tsunami on one end, but the other big problem is we need more compute power <laughs> and performance to crunch the data, right? So talk about that, because you, s you set a world record by sorting the tera sort, a terabyte, what, in 54 seconds, something like that, and, but this, is, this speaks to the performance, so share with us Kind of one, what's going on in this whole performance sector, and why is it important? Yeah, well, you know, really, it, what you're looking at with big, big data, the whole revolution here is around having basically infinite, infinite capabilities to store and process data, right? So that's becoming the increasingly affordable resource out there, and and that's what's really <coughs> spurring this kind of industrial revolution with these new applications and use cases, and we need to continue to push the envelope on that. So. Uh, We've, we've been partnering uh, quite a bit with uh, some of the cloud providers. We've got a great partnership with Amazon, but we've also done a lot of work with Google. And this week we announced that we'd spun up a, a thousand node cluster uh, in the Google Compute Engine cloud service. And we did complete a TerraSort faster than any other Hadoop TerraSort was run before in 54 seconds. And we did that on a much smaller hardware footprint as well. So we had about 40% less servers, disk, and cores than a previous benchmark. So uh, a pretty dramatic improvement in the performance of Hadoop and a, and a new Hadoop um, 
world record. So the stats were 1,000 uh, service, 1,003, 4,000 cores versus the 1460 previously, which was the benchmark was set, uh, record was set by Yahoo. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that was on-premise equipment. This is also in a virtualized environment, so uh, uh, it's also a testament to how well you know Google Compute Engine's been architected that they uh, didn't int int introduce any latencies or performance issues, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a combination of both. I think it's a common vision for you know how do you really push performance and scale to its limits. So MapR, people talk about moving up the stack, and obviously the big big hype about HBase, obviously HBase is a big part of the growth of Apache. Um, what are you guys looking at that? Because you, you, you talk, you're talking about drill and some other things. Uh, talk about your your view on that. Yeah, so first there's kind of our, our way of really um, uh, creating a standard platform that, that customers feel comfortable uh, deploying applications on. So, you know, everything that touched the application has to be industry standard. So if a, if a customer makes an investment building out an enterprise application, they need to be able to move it between the different distributions with very little switching cost. So everything that's done at that layer needs to be defined with an open source. So we did a project, we didn't do, we, we were involved with a project called Apache Drill. They're really excited about this building interactive query type technology into Hadoop. So it extends that investment that you made in your Hadoop uh, cluster to support another set of use cases, right? With the case of HBase, we've got a well-defined API out there. And uh, almost half the customers that we work with that run Hadoop clusters also use it, uh, HBase. Um, but they do struggle with some of the things. So we added some enterprise enhancements to that. And it's really along the same pillars. How do you make it easier? How do you make it more defendable? How do you make it faster? And it's, uh, it's some implementations that uh, if you use HBase, you know that compactions cause a lot of outages and, and issues with running HBase. Uh, region servers are hard to manage. Region splits are difficult to do and problematic. So we've solved those. We've put in uh, standard backups so you can back up and do point in time recovery. You can do mirroring for disaster recovery. And then again, we did a performance speed up. So, so what's the path for a customer? So you talk about existing HBase customers. You, right. see them, you see them everywhere. What's the path to go from where they are to wh where you want to take them? The absolute move unchanged. It's a very low switching cost process. I mean, basically, uh, the, this is all uh, application compatible, binary compatibility. So you don't even have to recompile an app to move it over there. So on MapR, the value proposition that you're yeah. saying is, is that you want to bring this in for the kind of those features that are needed for enterprises. What's next? What's on your horizon? Because uh, MC, your partner, uh, when I were on a panel in, in uh, Silicon Valley around uh, uh, big data monetization, the monetization conversation really is about utility. Mm -hmm. So above, as you move up the stack, there's applications. One, how do you guys play in that above the stack, above you, and what's your vision there? Yeah, uh, some of it is, you know, we are contributing uh, development resources to make it easier to build apps. So, uh, you know, we've, we've <coughs> deployed a file-based interface for Hadoop, so that makes it easier to build apps. We've, uh, we've, uh, we're contributing resources to the Apache Drill Project. I think uh, our HBase implementation will be easier to build apps for. But then we also have a number of partners out there, you know, Drawn to Scale and Datamir and Hadapt and a number of others that are building technologies that make it easier to, to build apps on the, on the Hadoop stack as well. Um, further, I think cloud's a big deal. So, you know, we're an OEM with Amazon, so uh, MapR is, uh, uh, can be chosen off a menu within Amazon Web Services, and you're charged by Amazon, Amazon pays us a royalty. And then we've done uh, quite a bit of partnership, like when uh, you and I last spoke at the Google I.O. conference, where we're bundled into the Google Compute Engine. And uh, we feel like cloud service is going to be a really, really uh, big innovation. Jorge well, thinks cloud's a big deal too. That's a yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Google Compute Engine because right now people like to deploy um, Hadoop and, and, and equivalent technologies on bare metal. Um, and and that the cloud can be a good place to go, but some say it's not baked yet. And even Google Compute Engine is really not available yet to the, to the crowd. So talk about that dynamic. It's not that cloud isn't right for Hadoop. Maybe it is and isn't now, but it certainly will be. That's a destination that's pretty clear. So there's a dynamic there. Can you share or clear up or disagree? Yeah, so <laughs> I think, I, I think <laughs> really the biggest issue with the cloud is where your data resides. So if you got a petabyte of data, it's hard to move it into the cloud. So if you're Amazon and you're running within uh, Amazon Cloud or ready for your applications and that data is already resident there, it's a little easier to do analytics on it. If your app isn't there, how do you get your data into the cloud, right? So that's uh, in, you know inefficient process. But you look at new applications, um, we have a server vendor that uh, is a customer of ours. Uh, if you look at an auto manufacturer, 
or actually even if you look at like beverage machines, like the Coke freestyle machines, these are all devices that are gonna be, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of devices that are gonna be spread across the world. And they wanna be able to do basically telemetry or telematics apps to log back from those devices back into a cloud. Well, they need to do that into a regional cloud. So you need to have a, a data center in Asia back, you need to have a data center in the Eastern seaboard and a Western seaboard and so forth. Well, who else can who else can do that but the big cloud providers, right? So you know, Amazon and Google will have those presence, mm -hmm. and then you still have the ability to do a global aggregation, right? So I think as you bring those new map apps on, on on board, well, that data's got to come out of a basically a device, whether it's a car or a Coke machine or whatever or a server. They can make their way into the cloud just as easy as it could to your on-prem equipment. So I think there's some use cases there that are just no-brainers for the cloud. Can you talk a little bit more about M7? Um, yeah, sure. You guys made that announcement. Um, where are you at? Can you talk about, do you, you know, do you have customers? And just give us an update there. Yeah, we'll have some res reference customers that we'll talk about tomorrow uh, at the uh, keynote pr uh, session. Um, and uh, it is in beta, so it'll be available by the end of the year. It's uh, basically uh, binary compatible, plug and play compatible with your Hadoop application, but there's, uh, I don't know how technical we want to get this uh, you can geek session. out if you want for a minute. <laughs> geek out. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, there's things that happen within HBase called compactions, and it causes an I.O. storm. So your HBase, basically your performance will go in the tank for a period of time while these compactions happen. We basically eliminated that process, so it's all really clean. If you look at uh, region splits, within HBase you kind of have what you call like key ranges, like you know A through F, G through P, you know, and those key ranges get overloaded, so you have to do manual region splits, and that's a, been a real headache. It probably causes uh, 30, 40% of our support calls is uh, customers who have tried to do a region split and ended up with a problem. So we've made that all go away. That's all automated. We automatically balance all the regions. Uh, the backup's a really big issue. Uh, disaster recovery through mirroring's a really big issue. Performance these are is tables. These issue. are table stakes for enterprises. Right, right. So really, if you look at it now with M7, <coughs> if you were thinking about doing an app with Mongo, you might look at HBase and M7 as a more scalable alternative. And if you're looking at like a, a big blob store where you wanted a key to be able to access a, a blob, instead of using something like React or Scality, you could look at HBase and say, I've got a strong consistency model, I got the ability to back up the data, and I've got a set of programming APIs that I could build APIs to actually build apps or use, uh, deploy use cases against that same data. Hmm. Awesome. So what do you think about Impala, Cloudera's uh, big announcement? Because it's all about real time. Um, we're watching Cloudera, they're, the, they're the, the lead horse in the Hadoop race. Well, you mentioned Hadap too. They're sort of so playing in yeah, that I same think, I think there's a number of SQL uh, and interactive query uh, initiatives out there. So Hadap's already got product out there. Hive's been out there for a while. Uh, Tron to Scale has a SQL engine that's a full read-write database. I think right. uh, Apache Drill and open source, we're getting a, a good implementation done that's going to be available on every distribution. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, you know, coming from a business intelligence platform where slice and dice query was really important in 1995, it's still important. Don't see it as that much of a breakthrough. I think it's something that's needed, and, uh, and there's quite a few It's an aspirin. It's an aspirin. Yeah, it's an, uh, there's quite a few things you can choose yeah. from too, right? There's already yeah. been a couple things on the market and then there's some new things coming out. What's a, what's a breakthrough in your mind that's coming that, that hasn't hit the scene yet that people are working on? I think the most exciting thing that we're seeing even now that'll be deployed uh, in 2013 is around some lightweight OLTP. So we're working a, with a telco provider that's, bil that's building a, a telco billing application on HBase. And that's a big change, right? We're always talking about predictive analytics, and here you've got really kind of a lightweight all TP, and uh, and you can see why. You know, 20 years ago you had one phone number, then maybe you gained a few cell phones in the family. Well, now you've got a data plan. There's so many transactions to be tracked that you need something more scalable than the traditional technologies. So HBase fits the bill for that. Uh, we also have a, a shipping company that we're doing a, a basically. A, a package tracking application for logistics. Yeah. And it's similarly, there's just so much activity there. HBase is a great platform for that. So I think the, the real breakthroughs you're gonna see next year is we're gonna be talking about some lightweight OLTP. John, final question, we're getting the break here, but I want you to uh, answer this final question, two parts. One, as an entrepreneur, you've been on the startup scene, uh, so you've done multiple successful startups. Uh, 
it's addictive on how it is. We don't want to go there on that question. But yeah. to, a, a, advice for startup entrepreneurs out there, because one, the market's growing like crazy. So you know, give the perspective as a, as, a, as a serial entrepreneur, an experienced entrepreneur, yeah. advice in this growing ecosystem of how to navigate, what to do, how to g you know, get their companies off the or ideas off the ground and companies. And the second part of the question is your vision for the <coughs> next five to 10 years in terms of the ecosystem. Um, obviously, looking back over the two years, a lot's changed. And looking forward, say five to 10, what would you see as the ecosystem change? So advice just to uh, either geek entrepreneur or other companies, how to navigate this growing marketplace. So that's within the big data market. Yeah, the whole big data within ecosystem. Within the big data market, uh, I'd say almost anything you start as a startup, you have to start with customers. You got to find something that's super high priority, something they need to get done to drive their business, either make money for their business or save money for their business, and make sure that's a top three priority for them. And if you interviewed CIOs, CTOs in 2008, that's what you'd hear in every single interview. Big data analytics is critical to my business. Um, and then look for where you can add a value proposition, right? Where could you help? What sort of issues are they running into or what sort of opportunities could you open up for them by creating a new technology? And that's really where you start and then get to the technology part of it. Then go see if you can, you can have the vision or partner with the right technology team that can create a vision for an architecture that can provide that value proposition. And then after that, it's all just execution, right? Okay, your vision for the next five years, as this ecosystem going, we got Hadapt, getting some, some success with the SQL thing, you're seeing um, you know, um, Impala, Yarn, all kinds of new tools, a lot of stuff going on, Hadapt, uh, Hortonworks, Cloudera, MapR, huge growing ecosystem. Yeah. What's your vision for that ecosystem? Well, I, I think we're, we're having a good slugfest for who owns the, the platform, right? And there's a couple players there I think that's spoken for and, and we're going to slug it out in Anarita. And then I, I don't think the market's ready for a vertically integrated stack yet, right? I mean, this is like being in the database market in 1991 or 92, <laughs> where you had you know Oracle, Sybase, and Formix, they'd slug it out based on better technology or better marketing or better sales, whatever. And, uh, and that's the mode we're in. And then we need other vendors to address other layers of the stack. So, you know, we've yet to see really a, a turnkey application, right? So it'd be great to see some companies really come out with a turnkey. We, we, uh, we are partners with Boeing, where they embed us in a, one of their applications, but we could see more of that. I think at the app dev layer, we'll consider to see a lot of, we'll continue to see a lot of innovation there. Um, but it won't be probably you know, 10, 15 years until we see really a, a you know, consolidated stack or vertical integration. And that's an Oracle stack. will jump in, John. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, they'll take credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this time there'll be a new, uh, a new, a new grand winner. Uh, one, great content, great advice for young entrepreneurs trying to make a difference in the world. And obviously the vision is uh, it's a platform war right now and it's uh, all great stuff, yep. great innovation and disruption. So uh, it's an exciting time. John Schroeder is CEO of MapR. Thanks for coming on to theCUBE. Appreciate it. This is SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back after this short break. Right. We looked at all the